Hello, and welcome to A New Angle. I'm your host, Justin Angle, Associate Professor of Marketing at the University of Montana College of Business. This podcast is my chance to speak with cool people doing awesome things in and around Missoula, Montana. We're interested in creativity and hustle, and the people we'll speak with here exude both of those in spades. Buckle up and let's go. Hello, and welcome back to A New Angle. Thanks for tuning in today. Today, we're going to shake things up and drop in an off-schedule episode coming to you on this Wednesday. And the reason we're, going, we're doing that is to celebrate the success of the men's basketball team here at the University of Montana. I've had the great privilege and pleasure of having three members of that team in class as students over the last year, Jamar Ako, Bobby Moorhead, and Fabian Krislovich. And these three guys just sort of exemplify what a student athlete should be. They're, they're great representatives of their team, of the university, and really enjoyed having them in class and, and getting to see the success that they've had on the basketball court. So we're here on the eve of the Big Sky Tournament. The men's basketball team here has ripped through the Big Sky Conference regular season, and they're looking to cap off the season with a successful run in the Big Sky Conference Tournament. And... Um, you know, hopefully play past that uh, well into March in the NCAA tournament as well. And we talk about that in the podcast today. It's a short interview. I didn't want to interrupt their um, their practice schedule and take away from their studies and their practice. So anyway, we get into it. Um, three guys from the men's basketball team. We wish them luck. I'll get out of the way and turn you over to Jamar, Fabian, and Bobby. All right, so we're here today with uh, three standouts from the University of Montana men's basketball team. Fellas, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yes, sir. Thanks We've got Jamar Ako, Fabian Krislovich, and Bobby Moorhead. And so these guys are all standout players on the hoops team, but also uh, I had the pleasure of having them in principal's marketing class. They're students at the College of Business and standout students, um, fun to have in class, great contributors. So I'm going to feature you guys as the first students to appear on a new angle. Uh, well, exciting. I, mean, yeah. I say it's a big deal, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the dozens of people listening are going to realize. Anyway, so um, let's just kind of go through. Jamar, so why Montana? Why University of Montana? You're a transfer student, right? Yes, from Cal State Fullerton. I took a visit here when I was in the transfer process, and I kind of fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like what we had going on here as far as, uh, you know, the, the level we're competing at. So that drew me in here, and then you know, just the community, and you know, Montana is a beautiful place. So all that just kind of brought me in. So when you say you fell in love with it, like what sorts of? Well, when I was on my visit, it was the springtime. You know, it's so like the flowers are starting to bloom, okay. and you know, it was, it was a little green, but a little cold at the same time. And you know, I went out and I experienced some some wilderness. You know, the outdoors. Yeah. You know, I was I was at one point I was standing on top of a mountain, just like overlooking the, the town, and it just felt great. Yeah, a little different than Southern California. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Fab, you're from Australia. Yeah, so uh, that's an even longer trek. Yeah, exactly. It was a bit of a bit of a different process for me because I actually uh, committed here before the current coaching staff was here. Mm. But so I just had a connection through one of my coaches back home. Was good friends with one of the assistants at the time, and then he came over a couple of times, saw me play. I started talking to him, and he recruited me. And then also having a, a guy mm. I knew here in the grade above, Jack. Uh, right, just, right. He just, it, was a, it was a good fit. and uh, Jack Lopez. Jack Lopez, yeah. yeah. he's another alum of our program. Mm -hmm, yeah, so I knew him from back home, and I was talking to him a lot, and he made it uh, just kind of reinforce the, the belief that this was a good place for me. And then it was a bit of a turbulent time when the coaching changed over, and I was thinking, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? But I think I had a little bit of communication with uh, Trav, the current coach. So, and just, yeah, I was like, I'm going to stick it out and come here, and it's it's been an awesome uh, three and a half years. So the coaching transition happened after you had after committed, I, but you committed were not a student yet. I was, yep. Oh, interesting. So it happened about, I think, I think it was like two or three months before I was supposed to come to campus. Okay. Yeah. Oof. What's the pathway for like high school standout basketball players in Australia? Is there college ball there? Uh, is there? There's basically two options you have if you want to keep playing after high school. You can either try get on a professional contract with one of the teams at home or keep playing at that level or you come a lot of people like to come to the u.s and play college basketball here okay so i know a lot of guys who have taken that uh this path and yeah it's been awesome mm -hmm. okay bobby how did you find montana well you know, i started my basketball career a little later than most people i started really playing in high school um so i didn't really get very good until my senior year okay and so and where I, was this in tacoma washington okay so i kind of um i wasn't really on the aau circuit like everybody else i did play one summer and i got hurt 
And then I didn't get recruited until my senior year of high school basketball. And Montana was one of the only main schools that was recruiting me, along with Portland State and a few other ones. Um, and then, you know, I just knew their winning history. I knew uh, they'd been top of the big sky. And then I just, you know, Travis, Coach Bone, Coach Cobb, a couple of the guys who aren't here anymore, um, they were honest with me on my visit. They weren't telling me lies that a lot of the co other coaches, mm -hmm. I feel like, were telling, you know. Uh, came on my visit to Missoula and, you know, a lot different than I imagined Montana would be like. And I really liked it. I never saw myself living in Montana as a little kid. You just think it's a bunch of small towns with weird people, obviously. But <laughs> it's, it's really not. I mean, Missoula's, Missoula's exceeded my expectations. It's been a great experience for me. Yeah, so I came here from the University of Washington in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even from that short distance, there was still like a, you're going to Montana? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, people don't realize how awesome it yeah. is here. It's, I can see myself living here. Yeah. So, okay. So we are kind of rolling in the season, big sky tournament coming up mm -hmm. and hopefully bigger things after that. Um, you guys have had some awesome runs this season um, in conference play, been dominating. Uh, let's take us back to, you guys had a big win in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. right? Early season was that early December? Uh, yeah, that was early November. Yeah. November. Yeah. But on the road, Pittsburgh, that's a big, they're Big East, right? They're ACC, ACC now. ACC now, yeah. okay, yeah. showing my age there. <laughs> anyway, so that's a big win. Maybe talk us through through that. Yeah, you know, at the time, it, it really felt like a big win. And then now the season's going on and their season's not going so sure, well. It doesn't feel great. But, you know, at the time, I think that it was a big confidence builder for us because we had, we had some new pieces. And so, I mean, just to go and beat any big school always feels great. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, an exciting win for uh, us. Oh, yeah, I think. We've had a couple of really close games with some some big schools, some of the Power Five conferences in the past. Like my freshman year, we played Cal really close when yeah. they were good. We should have won that game. And I think giving myself when you Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga they were ranked, games. we very well could have won that game. So to finally get on the upper hand against one of those bigger schools, I think meant a lot. Uh, I don't know, meant a lot to all of our players and our coaches, and just shows uh, taking a step forward, like as a program. Try, finally getting over that hump so I know, I know everyone felt really good about that and kind of yeah it was it was very big for to start our season off right you know these guys have been here for three four years you know I'm just I'm, this is my first year with the team I'm actually playing and I've heard the, the close games they've had with these power five you know schools and these big teams you know so it felt good to to finally get one you know it was our coach's first one mm -hmm. and so it felt really good so what's that feel like when you guys, you know, well, maybe you don't know. You got a sense that you're good. You're knocking on the door, right? Losing to Gonzaga by by three, just chipping away, chipping away. But there is an enormous difference between dropping a game to a big school or, you know, losing to a big school by a point or two mm -hmm. and then finally getting that win. Yeah. Like what? Did you know you could do it? Like wow, what's, what's yeah. in the mindset at that point? We always knew we could do it. We've always felt very confident going in those games. And yeah. It's always easier to get up for those games when you're playing these big schools. You know, you're really excited as opposed to sure. playing smaller schools. Sometimes it's it's always hard to just yeah. get super excited about it. So we're always amped for those big ones. Uh, but then just getting over that hump was just huge. You know, I mean, coming up short against Gonzaga, I mean, you look back at plays, and Absolutely. we think that if we change one thing, then that game is ours. And then, you know, that kind of happened at, at UW this year. A couple mm -hmm. calls we feel didn't go our way, and we lose by three to UW at Washington. Yeah. Which also, would have been a really awesome one. You know, and the conversation it kind of changes. You know, once you've been there. You know, it's kind of like we've been here before. Like we know what we have to do now. We have to get over the hump. You know, so you kind of learn how to win those games. Is that explicit? Like, do you guys discuss it, or is it just sort of in the in the team culture? It's it's, it's almost in the culture now. It's almost like an expectation that we're going to be in these games. You know, like Travis doesn't really talk about them as if they're like this school that's just so much better than us. It's, yeah. it's like, what can we do to put ourselves in the position to win this game? Because we sh should be playing. We just have talent, and Travis coaches us really well. So, Yeah, I suppose it's sort of this balance between, I mean, you don't want to, like, create a boogeyman. Of, no. oh, yes, you know, this team is so dominant, so big, mm -hmm. and we're not on the same level as them. But at the same time, there is a a kind of a bigness to some of these schools that yeah. you guys are competing against. That, I'd, say, um, I'd say we just expect to compete. Yeah. Really, is all it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's like that scene from Hoosiers, right, when they come in and they measure yeah. the... The hoop, they measure the free throw line. It's yeah. like this, it's five guys on five guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're about to enter the uh, Big Sky tournament. I mean, you guys, well, you rattled off 
Was it 11 straight, 13 straight, yeah, straight and dropped and one to Eastern Washington? Dropped, dropped uh, both games on the road last weekend. So where's where's the team at now? What's the, How are the spirits? Great. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we hadn't lost in a long time, so uh, a lot of people probably just didn't really know what to feel. I mean, right. it's been a while since we lost. Um, but surprisingly, everybody handled it well. Everybody was ready to get back to work this past week and knew that ultimately we control our destiny and what happens going forward. We can... We can control whether we win conference or not. So yeah, absolutely. It's not like we have to wait for somebody else to lose or somebody else to win for us, which is, you know, we're in the driver's seat, so it's really exciting for us. Um, so I think everybody's really optimistic going forward. Yeah, yeah that's true. We haven't, we haven't really been in a spot. Like, even my freshman year when we won it, uh, we were the number one seed. We we went in this situation where we were in control of our own hands. We, I remember the last day of the year, we were, we were all watching uh, – Sac State was playing uh, NAU on the road and we were all watching our screens because I think Sac State had the tiebreaker over us and we were just all hoping they'd lose. And So they lost that game and we had to just go beat in Montana State to get the one seed. So we're not even when we won it, we weren't even as, in as good a position as we are now. We were still relying on other teams up to the very last day, whereas now we got uh, three home games and uh, going ahead. If we if we win them, there's no question we're going to be the number, number one team. So that's really a nice feeling to have. Now we're just speaking of home games. Like, how, what what are the dynamics there? And what is it like playing here versus other places? What's good about being and home? Routines. You get to yeah. stick to what you do, and you're more comfortable. You know, sleeping in your own bed. Yeah. You get to go to the gym whenever you want on a game day. You know, if you want to work out or lift or whatever it may be. Um, and on the road, you know, sometimes you can't get in the gym, or you know, you're in a hotel and you might not sleep well in a hotel. Oh, yeah. Or you have to cater to whatever. Practice yeah. time. Food is a little less yeah, stable. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. A lot of different things that go on. And, yeah. Although one thing I remember from road trips in college um, is that there there was an additional, perhaps a level of focus, just because you were all together. You know, you weren't sleeping True. in your various apartments or dorms or whatever. Mm-hmm. So there were some things about road trips that could focus you. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But I think another thing I like being at home is you know you can. It's not just focused about basketball for four days straight. Yeah. Maybe you can mind off a little thing. It's not doesn't. Sometimes on the road, I feel like maybe just the pressure builds up and you just maybe a bit too tense about things. So it's another thing I like being about home. Is you can take your mind off a bit easier. You know, you, yeah, as Jamar said, you sleep in your own bed. You can do whatever. You stick to your routine. You know, mm-hmm. stick to the same framework that everyone has to follow. So yeah, I think that's a, one big thing that probably people don't think about when they think about a, a home home court advantage. You don't miss as much school as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> last that semester was, was pretty difficult. Yeah, I remember having you guys in class four, last fall. Last four weeks was, of yeah, last semester. semester was brutal. Yeah. Like I think yeah, last four weeks there was some class we didn't get we to go to. Didn't go until the final. Yeah. Just, yeah. Tough, and that's uh, tough. I mean so that's a nice transition into one thing I, I wanted to cover. It, it's challenging being a student athlete and you guys succeed, you know, you, you excel in the classroom and you're excelling in your sport. Can you talk a little bit about you know, your experience as a student athlete, how it's been easier or more difficult than you imagined in your time here? Yeah. I know for me, uh, it's actually been, I mean, it's about right where my expectations are. I knew classwork was going to get more difficult and, but I didn't expect the teachers. Most of my teachers have worked with me pretty well and, you know, and what we realized is if you get on it early and email them and even go see them, uh, a lot of the professors are going to be willing to work with you. Sure, you know? yeah. And just and if that helps, I mean, if a professor works with you, that changes pretty much everything. But if, if you have a professor who's not willing to work with you, it makes it extremely difficult when you're not in class to mm-hmm. be able to help yourself. Yeah, you and one thing that I feel like to succeed as a student athlete in the classroom, you just got to be a bit more disciplined in terms of getting on things early. You know. Maybe uh, talking to your classmates, getting some notes that from class you missed and just sitting down for maybe an hour and try to go through the material that you missed by yourself. So that's not always easy to do, but I think that's what you have to do to succeed, to do it because you can't just show up to class every day when you're missing one, two, three, four weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Jamar, any thoughts on that? I think as I've gotten older, you know, every year has gotten easier, you know, coming from my freshman mm-hmm. year where – you kind of don't know. You don't know like what what it's like. You know how to communicate with your professors, right? Or, or you know what you have to get done before you leave for a road trip, or whatever it may be. So I think as I've gotten older, you know, I've kind of learned like what steps to take, and, you know, yeah. and how to just approach that. Yeah, and it would see. I mean, I know in the in the marketing class we had together, there's a big group project at the mm-hmm. end of the semester, and trying to you know, I know as, as when I was a student athlete, like 
being a part of a team was important. And so being a part of a student team was important. Yeah. I'm sure you guys take that mm-hmm. work seriously. Yeah. And how do you be a good teammate to your, to your fellow students in the classroom while trying to manage your commitments to, to practice? And you kind of hope they just understand. I mean, cause, do they get it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, we, you know, we have group meetings outside of class and you know, maybe it's during practice time and, or you have on something you're on the road or something yeah. and you can't make it all the time. And, um, you know, some people understand, some people don't, and you just kind of hope that they do. And you kind of you just do what you can, you know. You you offer to help uh, with whatever yeah. you can, do your part. You know, that's the main thing. Just making sure you do something, uh, do your part, and try offer and, try and contribute. You know, exactly. you can't be there. It's just yeah, being in constant contact with them. Usually, it's worked out in the past. I had a group where you know they've been too hard on me for missing. You know, just you know, doing your part. I think is huge. Yeah, you've mentioned it a couple times, Bobby's communication, right? And generally speaking. The, the more communication there is in the classroom with mm-hmm. students, with faculty, whatever, the better things mm-hmm. go. And, and you guys do a good job of kind of getting out in front of stuff. I know, Jamar, I remember you came to me with the schedule in like end of September saying yeah. this is going to get rough in late October, late November, early December. And at that point, like the more we're aware, everybody can plan around yeah. that stuff. Yeah, that's something yeah. we preach, you know, on our team is communication. You know, yeah. You know, it can take you a long way. Yeah. Yeah, two years ago, without, right when I got on campus that summer, that was a trap called in a meeting for us, and it was just a meeting on communication. It was like ten minutes, and yeah. he said, "If anybody ever emails you, texts you, you reply, and then if you ever need anything, it's, and it's just it's just constant communication." I just remember that. Yeah. So talk more about that. So communication, sort of a fundamental value of the team. What other sorts of things are fundamental values that build this team? Respect goes along with communication. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just. Being on time to things, mm-hmm. being early to even things. Uh, when you let your trainer know you're going to go in to get treatment, you be there on time. Or strength, or weights, you know, when you're supposed to be there at noon, you be there at noon. Yeah. So just respecting the people who are putting their time into us as well as us into them, you know. So sure. Respect is a big thing for us. Just respect, yeah. communication. Accountability. Accountability, those yeah. kind of all go together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, at a certain point, it becomes, yeah, a culture almost where... You know, I don't know that we're quite there yet, whereas, you know, you see some of these mid-major schools who are basically high majors like Gonzaga or Wichita State, where this culture is just built in and it doesn't even really necessarily be discussed. You know, it's just something that you know, it's expected. you just ex- it's expected, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, that's something I think about a lot because culture is, it's it's hard, it's murky, it's hard to kind of describe, yeah. but, you know, when you're on a team that is committed to winning, you know, it's just part of the ether there's a fine line between that and, and, and other teams that, that aren't winning. And you can't just attribute that to hard work. I mean, everybody's working hard, yeah. or at least they think they are. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Have you been on teams where you thought you were working hard and then you didn't quite realize it until you've been on a team like the one you're on now or situations like that? I would, say, well, I, was gonna say, I would say even last year. Just, okay. We were 16 and 16, I think. And you could just feel the difference in the way people are working this year. And just the, from... The program top to bottom, is just, it just feels different. I don't really know how to describe it. But yeah. Everybody's more bought in this year as opposed to last year. Yeah, how does that happen? Like, did that happen right from the get-go? Or What's funny is I was doing an interview and somebody asked me that. Like, how are, like, how are we putting our egos aside? And how are we, how is, like, everybody bought into what we're doing? And sure. I told the guy, I don't know. Like, I think it's something that just kind of, you can't really force it. Like, either it's going to happen or it's not. And that's what makes teams special, whether they can get guys to buy in or whether, you know, people don't. And I think we just have a group of guys that, you know, we're, we're unselfish and we care for each other. And I think that's the biggest thing is uh, just to who we are. And, you know, we're, we try to be the best people we can, you know, off the court, on the court, you know, in the community, whatever it may be. And so that would maybe speak to some of the importance of of that kind of breakthrough win early in the yeah. season, right? I mean, you, everybody starts the year optimistic, generally, but then getting a big notch in your belt early on. You know, can solidify mm-hmm. that culture. And yeah, what else? I think we got another year older this year, so like our mm. core, I think five guys are all upperclassmen who have been Juniors and seniors, yeah. who have been in, in Division One programs for at least three or four years. So and I think uh, we all we all know what what it takes to be successful. And I think this year more so than last year, we have guys who are holding setting standards for other guys, and I think even doing a better job of holding account holding people accountable. I know Jamal's been a big difference. Like last year, you know, he wasn't he was around the team a lot, but he didn't get to travel with us. He wasn't playing with us, but he was he was still being a leader in the locker room. But now that he's uh 
He's playing. He's with the team all the time. He's going to tell people when they screw up. He's going to tell people if they're not doing things the right way. And I think, yeah, he's, that's just one example of how uh, the culture's kind of changed and we're uh, more as a group bought into doing the right things. And, cause, and then even when we stray from that, sometimes mm. we're going to, going to have guys who are going to pull us back in and put us on the right path. Mm. So I think that's, that's been really big, really big time this year. Yeah, so different roles in your, in yeah. your culture. Our are roles emerging. are very defined. I mm-hmm. think everybody knows, you know, what to expect from Fab, Bobby, or, you know, myself. You know, the other guys on our team, they know that as well. And the people that you know, maybe don't have as big of a, as a, of a <laughs> role, they understand what their role is, and they try, to th- they try their best to uh, fulfill that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we got those last few regular season games, Big Sky Tournament. And, uh, you know, I don't want to put you guys too on the spot, but I'm sure you have ambitions to play, you know, well into March. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and what do you think? I mean, none of you guys have ever played in the NC2A tournament. What was the last time, Fab? It was 2015? 2013. 13? The made it. Yeah. yeah, so great opportunity there. We don't want to count chickens before they hatch. A lot of wood to chop. But um, what do you think about that opportunity? For Especially for a small school like us, it doesn't really matter what our record is in conference as long as we win three in a row sure. in that conference tournament because we're not really going to get out of large bid. It just mm-hmm. doesn't really happen. So, you know, just to prepare ourselves as best we can for I'm looking forward to it, but we gotta, we got to handle our business and make sure everybody's ready. That's why you play every game of the season. You want to build. You want to get better. It's, it's around March, this time of the season. It's when you'll be, be at your best so you can make run of the tournament and play in that uh, in the NCAA tournament. Probably the biggest, I think it's the biggest sporting spectacle in the world, probably. I think looking at TV deals and viewerships, it, it's yeah, actually... Yeah, you add it all up over the whole world. month. It's yeah. pretty amazing. It's a, it's a pretty <laughs> incredible... Incredible bit to watch and to be a part of it would be an absolutely uh, yeah as Bob said dream come true. So I've been close a couple times my freshman year and my sophomore year. I think lost in the championship by four get four points and three points, and uh, yeah, yeah that really hurts. And that was something I kind of expected uh, before uh, before coming here. I was like we'll go to Montana. Like you looked at the history, like it's a uh, an NC. Double A tournament uh, appearance, but obviously it's not something that happens. It's a lot of hard work, and we got a lot of. There's a lot of teams in this conference who all think that they are uh, that they can uh, win and get get that spot. So it's going to be a tough couple of weeks, but yeah, we think we're we've been preparing this for for a long time, and we think uh, we think we can do it. Nice, Jamar. Any thoughts on that? I have too much to say. Um, I just know it'd be a dream come true for me. Uh, this is the reason I came here to compete for a championship. You know, I'm blessed, you know, with this opportunity. Hopefully we just we'll do our best, you know, just to see what we can do in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll see. Well, guys, I really appreciate your generosity of your time. This is a Friday afternoon, and you guys have practice, so I don't want to make you late to that <laughs> for sure. But thanks so much for being committed to this university. You represent yourselves well. You represent all of us well. And uh, thanks, and good luck. Appreciate well, it. Thanks. Appreciate, appreciate you having us. Thanks for listening to A New Angle. We really appreciate it. Remember that A New Angle was brought to you by CED, Consolidated Electrical Distributors. They're our first sponsor, and we can't thank them enough. Coming up next week, we have Mike Foote. Mike is a professional athlete in two sports that not many people know about. Mike really has to hustle to make a living doing what he loves, and we're going to talk about all of that. And if you enjoy this podcast, there are several ways you can support it. First, rate us on iTunes. Second, write a review. And third, please just tell your friends about it. For information on sponsorship opportunities, please visit our website, www.business.umt.edu slash a new angle. As we close, if you have any suggestions, comments, questions, insults, whatever, please email me at a new angle at umontana.edu. Help us spread the word and be sure to use the hashtag a new angle when you do. Thanks a lot and see you next time.